In the summer of 2019, catastrophic wildfires engulfed the Amazon regions of Brazil, Bolivia, Paraguay, and Peru. Thousands of people were involved in the effort to extinguish these blazes, care for the wildlife, and treat people who were injured. One doctor in Bolivia came forward with a bizarre story, something that happened to him whilst working in one of these inferno areas. He claims that one night, a mysterious stranger came to him in distress. What happened next seems like something out of a sci-fi novel. This is the strange case of Paul Parada. 30-year-old Paul Parada, a doctor, was working in the Chicatano Forest in the Amazon region in Bolivia. He was with a group of volunteer medical personnel and firefighters from all over the world. They operated out of a medical facility camp, treating injured natives and firefighters. Paul's brother, also a doctor, had joined him and was working alongside him at the facility. One evening in September 2019, Paul was at the camp with his brother when two fire trucks arrived carrying volunteers. His brother joined them and they left to go to the firefighting outpost. Paul elected to stay behind as he was feeling quite exhausted. Later that night, after treating some local children, Paul stepped out of the medical tent to smoke a cigarette. For the first time that day, he was alone. It was around 11 p.m. As he stood outside, he suddenly saw, in the distance, a very tall figure approaching his location. By the light of the moon, he could see that the figure was quite tall, around six and a half feet with a pale complexion and long, shoulder-length blonde hair. At first, Paul assumed that it was one of the foreign volunteers coming back to camp for medical treatment. The figure had what appeared to be a blanket wrapped around his shoulder and upper left arm. As he moved closer, Paul asked if he needed any help. In perfect neutral Spanish, the stranger answered, yes, that he was in need of assistance as he had suffered an injury. Paul led the man inside the medical tent. After getting situated, he asked the man about the injury. The figure removed the blanket and lifted his left arm, showing him a rather deep and bloody wound. It was at this point Paul took notice of the fact that the stranger was wearing a peculiar one-piece tight-fitting coverall with silvery stripes and dots arranged in vertical and horizontal positions like Morse code not the typical dress of people in that area. Paul was further surprised that there was no blood on the man's outfit, even though he was bleeding quite profusely. Slowly the doctor cleaned and treated the wound, which required eight stitches. Curious, and to make small talk while he worked, Paul asked the man how he had come to be injured. The man looked straight at Paul and, in his mind, told him that he had been attacked by a young puma. His lips had not moved, but somehow he heard him, and this left Paul quite startled. He stared at him, a mix of shock and confusion. The stranger seemed to realize that he had inadvertently communicated using his mind, and he seemed to know that the doctor was deeply unsettled. Since he felt no more compulsion to keep up his charade, the figure reached up and placed his hand on Paul's shoulder. He looked into his eyes and said to him, again, via his mind, Don't be afraid. Everything is going to be all right. Paul was quite frightened at this point, but he carried on treating the wound. He attempted to keep his head clear as he realized that this man could probably read his every thought. After Paul finished, the man stood up and placed the blanket back over his shoulder and upper arm. Paul provided him with some gauze and medication and gave him instructions on how to treat and clean the wound. He then told him to come back in eight days so that the stitches could be removed. Without speaking a word, the man communicated to the doctor that he felt weak. He also told Paul that he was going to see something that might scare him. He asked him not to be frightened as no harm would come to him. Paul had no idea what was going to happen next, but he accompanied the man outside. He brought a pair of scissors, just in case. No doubt the figure could read his thoughts regarding this matter, though he did not acknowledge it. 
Once outside the tent, standing in the dark, Paul was stunned to see a large, silvery, metallic, dish-shaped object hovering a few feet above the ground. The craft had several small square windows around its perimeter. It was completely silent and was about 200 meters away from their location. Paul became terrified when he spotted two humanoid figures standing directly under the craft. Whatever these things were, they were absolutely not human, and they were unlike any animal Paul had ever seen before. They stood about three and a half feet tall. Their skin was pale green in color, and both were wearing the same type of coverall that the tall, blonde-haired man was wearing. Utilizing strange mechanical movements, both creatures approached to within 100 meters of Paul and the stranger. The man then turned around and raised his hand, gesturing goodbye to Paul. He then thanked him, calling him by his first name, which Paul had never told him. Paul merely nodded and then turned around and went back inside the medical tent. He did not see the craft, the tall man, or the creatures leave, nor did he want to. He remained awake the rest of the night, unable to sleep. Speaking to researcher George Louis Suxdorf, Paul admitted that the two short entities terrified him, though he was unsure why. He felt they were subservient to the tall man, and that they were his, quote, helpers or assistants. The next morning when his brother returned, Paul told him what had occurred. He elected not to tell anyone else, fearing what people might think. For the next three months, Paul had trouble sleeping. Afterwards, he developed an interest in the UFO topic, something up to that point he had not much cared about. He kept the bloody gauze he used to treat the stranger's wound and took samples in order to perform some tests, though everything came back normal. He attempted to perform a DNA test, but the procedure was not available in his country and it was too expensive to ship overseas for testing. He still has the samples and hopes to one day get them properly tested. This case is fascinating because it suggests that, despite their advanced technology and seeming superhuman abilities, these beings are not infallible. They make mistakes. They get attacked by wild animals. They even sometimes crash their ships. This entity, which sounds like, just going by the description, a Nordic type being, probably could have jettisoned off to wherever it came from in order to have its wound treated. But it chose to have Parada do it, possibly because the being understood that the wound was too severe and it needed immediate attention. Another interesting detail, and one I'm not used to hearing, is the fact that the being seemed to inadvertently give itself away by using telepathy. This might have been because it was in a great deal of pain, affecting its ability to think or because it just got so used to speaking that way that it had forgotten to communicate using its mouth. Once it had been found out, it opted to simply drop the charade and communicate the way it felt most comfortable. The fact that Parada continued treating it despite the sheer strangeness of the situation speaks to his professionalism as a doctor, or maybe the entity was controlling him to some extent, it's hard to say. What were these beings observed by Parada doing there? Were they on a mission of some sort? Something to do with wild animals, possibly pumas? Or were they merely surveying the wildfires, taking stock of the utter devastation and carnage us humans have wrought? Regardless, the beings were definitely aware of Parada, or at least the facility, as they seemed to have no trouble finding it. What is more interesting is that the leader, or the entity that Paul took to be the leader, opted not to land its ship right there in front of the tent, possibly because it knew that Paul would take off running had they done so. Instead, it merely walked up to him out of the darkness, presenting itself as human. Paul had no idea. Aside from its odd style of dress, this being appeared perfectly normal. Paul spoke of his intense fear of seeing the green-skinned beings. Was it their appearance that frightened him, or was it something deeper than that? something that Paul was not consciously aware of. In my previous video, I discussed a case in which a woman's aunt, a doctor, was being used against her will to assist the visitors as they carried out their examinations. This leads me to wonder if what happened to Paul Parada 
was not some kind of test designed to examine his abilities. Was Paul afraid of the green-skinned beings because they looked weird? Or because he'd seen them before? Had he interacted with them in the past and just not remembered it? Was everything that happened to Parada that night, the mind speak, the UFO reveal, the green-skinned beings, all part of something larger? Was Parada being primed for something that he, up to that point, was not aware of? I like that he kind of like, this 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 guy this this being he if it wasn't some kind of a, I don't know like a test or whatever it, it, this 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 uh, Nordic being or whatever he he definitely does not come off as uh, <laughs> he he gets attacked by a puma he rushes to a human doctor to get his wounds fixed or his wound fixed. He talks to him with his mind, and then kind of realizes after the fact that he, like, oh, I, you know, I shouldn't have done that. Um, and he, and then at that point, it was just like, all right, you know, you already know. So here, I'm just gonna have him land in front of the tent and get me out of here. I, I thought that was kind of like he, he's, um, I don't know, it kind of like right reminds me of like uh, he, he, just a, a bumbling kind of uh, being. He he doesn't seem to have his stuff together. So, I don't know, I, I found that to be kind of funny. Thank you.